Welcome back to The Painting Coach and in this video I'm going to show you how to paint a Deathwing Terminator. Okay, so it's Deathwing time. So this is the uh, classic Deathwing Terminator Sergeant from the Dark Vengeance box, which I've had sitting around almost as long as that box has come out. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the uh, dark green areas. Now I've primed it with wraith bone. So the model's kind of got a, uh, a colder uh, bone color to it. So if you've played the Deathwing game, uh, I know this is something somebody requested. They'd love to see like a, a lighter bone color. This is kind of what we've got here. So we're using Caliban green. Now going over a light, uh, a lighter color, it's not fantastic. So it's going to need uh, two thin coats. So just paint any bits you want to be dark green. So any robes uh, and the chest eagles as well. So get that done, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll start the metallics next with silver. Once we've got that uh, dark green down, let's switch to silver. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use the same colour to shade them both. So moving to Iron Hand Steel, uh, we're going to use this for kind of all the silver metallic bits. Now, you may struggle to find um, this particular model, but just have a look at the normal Dark Angel box art if you're uh, struggling to see which bits need to be silver. So it's, you know, it's things like the sword. You've got on Terminators, you've got these pipes kind of working their way. Uh, I guess they're for power through there. And of course we've got the the gun, the the eye lens as well. So just work your way around and get them all, get it all base coated with iron hand steel. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll shade that in the green next. Once we're happy with that silver and we're happy that it's dry, just going to take some null oil and uh, shade it all down. Now, really important that we uh, don't go too wild and get a little bit too crazy with it. We just want to make sure it shades things. We don't want it to, to massively pool, okay? So just work your way around the model gently, take your time. Uh, I'm still going to do the green and similar kind of thing, really, and making sure that the... Uh, goes in the recesses but you're not drowning the model now i am taking a lot of care as well and i should really have said this at the start not to paint these darker colors over uh the white or the, the bone but if you do it's okay just just use some wraith bone to tidy it up but we'll get all the base colors done first and we'll we'll go in with that kind of last before we kind of worry about uh doing the armor so that's darkened some of those areas down quite a bit so let's just shade up shade up highlight up the uh the silver and the color I'm using this is chrome from Vallejo Model Air and I've not thinned this down on the palette it's designed for an airbrush so uh, it's pretty thin already and what I'm looking to do is catch the edges there just like that and you can see you get a nice straightforward edge uh, you can do the same thing on uh, the gun for example just to catch those top edges give yourself a nice uh, easy highlight and then where you can't do that just use the, the tip of the brush. So work your way around the silver metallics, getting a nice crisp highlight, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll do the gold next. For the gold, uh, we're going to use um, Retrobu Drama. Now, there's quite a bit of gold on the model, uh, and depending on your particular choice of Deathwing model, you'll also have varying degrees of it so um things to paint i've got this little sensor here to make sure it gets into all the gaps um there's obviously the, the cross guard on the sword and there's lots of little bits of, and of sort of charms and things like that which i'm going to paint in the gold as well so nice and simple i've not thinned the paint down too much um I don't need to on the wet palette, but depending on how thick it is in your pot, you may need to. So just work your way around, get that done, and then we'll shade it next. To shade uh, this gold, we're going to use some Gulliman Flesh Contrast Paint. Um, and the reason I'm using that as opposed to um, 
Reichel and Flesh Shade, which I'd normally use, is just to cut down on the paints because we're already using quite a few paints on this. So all we're doing is just going to paint over the gold with the Gelman Flesh uh, and just make sure that we're, you know, we're getting into those recesses, but we're not putting too much on and we're not flooding the area. So work your way around nice and slowly, take your time, enjoy it, and then we'll come back and highlight it next. Once we're happy that Gelman flesh is dry, it's going to take some Liberator Gold. Now I've not thinned this down because mine's fairly thin and needs a good shake to mix it up as well. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to just catch those edges, very similar to how we did the uh, the chrome. So you know you have to go in close to catch some of them, but just take your time. It's just slipped a bit there, but it's okay. It's not too much of a an issue and you can see there's hardly anything coming off the brush there's a very subtle highlight so just work your way around all the gold like that like I said just catching as many edges as you can and then we'll come back and we'll get to work on uh, some of the more functional parts of the armor what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a look at some of the, the parts on the armor uh, so we'll do the the piping first so I use black templar for this now again make sure you haven't got too much on your brush and you just want to work it in over the piping uh, and you can see that it gives you a nice pre-highlighted effect so it's a really good paint for that so I'm just going to finish up this bit here and again be careful if you do get it on the armor, then we're, you know, we're going to tidy things up. Uh, and the other thing we're going to do as well is these feathers we've got here. We're going to pop some Black Templar on those. So they'll give us, again, a really nice effect that we don't have to work too hard on. We, I probably will give them a little highlight later when I've got one of the lighter greys on the go. But right now, that's uh, that's good enough for me. And again, as we work through the model, we're starting to frame it more and it's really helping to bring all the bits out. So work your own way around, get all that done, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll do the red parts next. So let's move on to the red then. Again, we're going to be as careful as we can with this colour and any mistakes we'll just go back and fix with some wreath bone later. So I've thinned this down a little bit uh, just to help it flow off the brush a bit better. And what I'm looking to do is just paint the weapon so again nice and straightforward you can always go back in and cover up any mistakes you make later on I'm going to paint that scroll and the weapon because I'm going to paint all them anyway and the other thing we're going to do we've got the deathwing icon on the shoulder pad as well so just take your time with that be as careful as you can when it comes to the actual uh, bone colour and then we'll come back once we've got all that done and we'll give it a little bit of a shade and then a highlight. To shade the red, we're just gonna go back to some Nuln Oil. And again, we don't wanna flood the areas or anything like that. So we just wanna take our time, but just work it around. If you, it's not so bad in there because I'm gonna be painting that anyway, but if it does uh, all gather in one place, then just move it around with the brush to make sure uh, that it doesn't dry there. Can see i've done some other areas i've done this uh, scabbard in the red as well so i'm going to give that a shade uh, and i'll do the, the these off cam just because i can get a better angle to paint them so get that done let it dry and then we'll highlight it next to highlight the red we're going to use a, a much brighter color we're going to use uh, evil sun scarlet just thinned it a touch you want too much on your brush uh, and essentially what we're looking to do is we're just look oops not do that uh, not painted on the bone we're just looking to catch the kind of the the parts of the uh, for on the deathwing symbol those kind of more exposed parts and then for the uh, for the weapon and any other bits and pieces we're just looking to catch a good edge where we can and again, you can always go back and tidy this up. And obviously, I'm going to do that because of that little mistake there with the wraith bone. But just work your way around all the kind of the red bits with the evil sun scarlet, uh, and that will make give you a bit of a brighter thing. And we'll pop back in then, just with a really sharp highlight for that next. To start highlighting uh, the red even more, we're going to do two things. The first thing we're going to do is just take some 
Fire Dragon Bright. We're going to pop this on the the sharpest edges, and you can see there that gives a nice kind of uh, bright highlight. And the next stage is is totally optional. I'm just going to show you how to do it though, just to kind of push the brightness on there. Let's just take a little bit of Kislev Flesh, which you can see I've got there on the palette. This is fairly thin down, but then all you want to do is on the sharpest part, just pop a little dot. And you can see there, it really does kind of just add to that reflective quality. Now you don't have to do that bit, it's purely optional, but just do that on all the red, and then we'll come back and we'll do the green next. The first thing we'll do is we'll have a look at the, the chest eagle, and we want to use a little bit of Warpstone Glow for this highlight. Uh, this is perhaps quite awkward to get into and show on camera. So I'm just taking my time and using the tip of my brush just to catch the bottom of these wings to to highlight them. So there's very little on this uh, on this model because of the robe. So for the robe itself, I just want to use very little of the Warpstone Glow. And we just want to catch those top edges. And you see it's very subtle in terms of what how that highlight looks. And that's because we're not putting too much on our brush. And it's a fairly thin paint anyway. Just want to pop it on those raised areas just to help highlight. So work your way around all the cloth like that. And we'll come back just with a little touch more highlight for it. And the last little color we're going to use with the, the green is a little bit of Scars Knit Green. Now, this is a little more desaturated than something like Mooked Green, um, which would really just kind of overpower. Uh, and what we're looking to do is just the most raised areas of the of the cloth. We're just looking to get a nice thin line of that Scars Knit Green going down there. Now, if you're not happy and you think it's a little thick, then you just go back over it or just thin it with a little bit of that warp stone from the from the previous step but I'm really happy with with that kind of highlight cuz it just like I said it's just a little bit more desaturated so it makes the cloth look a little bit more like cloth rather than bright hard armor so get that done um, once we've got that bit done I'm now going to go uh, and do the the stonework next and once we've done the stonework we're going to jump into the uh, the armor for any stone bits you've got, so obviously this is the Crux Terminatus and there's the little bit of design on the leg there. What I want to do to start off with is firstly base coat it with some Dawnstone. Now this should cover nice and straightforward, but it may need a second coat depending on how thick your particular paint is and how well it goes on. So just get that done and then we'll come back uh, and we'll shade it next. Next thing we're going to do is shade it just to add a little bit of definition and the colour I'm going to use for this is Null Oil and again important that we don't flood the area, we just want to drop it into the, the recesses there, similar for all the other bits as well, just drop it in the recesses, let it settle, let it dry and we'll come back and we'll give it a little highlight next. To highlight that grey we're looking to use some Administratum grey. Now again, this is going to be much brighter than um, what we've got after the shade. So just take your time, work it on there. Excuse my uh, the dog barking. Somebody's obviously walked past the window and he's shouting at them. So again, just following on where we can, catching those sharp parts. And then same for around here really. Where we can, if there's a raised edge, catch that edge with the brush. Makes life just that bit easier. So get that done and all the kind of stonework. Uh, and then what I'm going to do, now I won't do it on cam, but I'm going to go around everything. And I'm going to, all the bits and all the little mistakes I've made with Wraithbone, I'm going to cover those up uh, by painting uh, the Wraithbone back in. And in terms of the areas that I'm including in this, um, it's going to be all the kind of the cords, feathers, the armour itself, anything I haven't painted so far, so the scrolls, pooties, etc., Get all that done, and then uh, when we come back in, uh, see the colours are blown out a bit there as well, I'll uh, 
I'll show you how to paint all those bits and be fairly quick and then we can get into the armor. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, uh, so we're jumping into contrast paints, uh, we're going to take some skeleton horde and I'm going to use this, uh, not too a huge amount on the brush, but I'm just going to use this for the feathers here. Just work that into those recesses so you've got some nice uh, delineation. I'm also going to use it on the, uh, the scrolls here, so on the paperwork of the scrolls and then any um, purity seals that you've got. This guy's got one just here. So just cover that with a skeleton hood, let it dry, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll jump onto the darker wood next. The darker colour we're going to use is wild wood. Um, now this is quite a powerful colour, so just use it sparingly. Just make sure I haven't got too much on my brush. So we've got the dagger handle here. Now, if you're not happy with how it covers the dagger handle, then you can just go back in and give it a second coat. We're also going to use it for the, the strings there, the bottom of these purity seals, and also the kind of clasps on them as well. So not too much, but just work it in, let it dry. And if you're not happy with it, pop a second coat on, and then we'll uh, come back for all the string next. For all the string and the grip on the sword, you can use some Volupus pink. Um, so this is quite a powerful colour. So I've got too much of my brush there, so I'm just going to take that off, clean it off, and then kind of just go back into the sword and just paint it around. Now, if that's too pink for you, then just uh, you can just put a second uh, a second coat on, and I'll take that off. And then we're also going to do all the cord as well. So there's lots of this all around the model. Take your time. Be careful not to. Uh, paint over anything you've already finished uh, and the bone if you do go over the bone and that what I'm going to do once I finish this step is I'm just going to go back to that wraith bone and I'm going to just tidy up everything one last time uh, before we come back in and start the armor so get that done and all the kind of bits of cord and then we'll uh, tidy it up and then uh, we'll get on to the armor we're nearly done okay let's make a start on the armor so then the important thing here uh, we're going to do a mix of contrast medium and skeleton horde. So it's a one-to-one -one mix of contrast and skeleton horde. And the important thing is when you kind of put your brush into it, it's to wipe your brush off before you come back to the model. And then what we're going to do is we're going to paint this over all of the armour. But what we want to be careful of is that we only do one piece at a time. So just with the helmet there. And you can see that we're starting to get that lovely bone colour coming back up. Because we've used that contrast medium, it should settle nicely in the recesses. So again, let me show you. So we're just looking to do one part of the armour at a time. and Make sure you wipe your brush off before you come back to the model so that we're not putting too much contrast medium onto the model. Oh, sorry, too much paint onto the model uh, in one go. Okay, so it's one-to-one -one contrast medium, skeleton hood, and we're doing just a little bit model at a time and then once you've kind of got that and it's dry if you want to go in and do more then you can so just to add some depth to the recesses so do this all over the model and then we'll come back have a look how it is and then maybe we'll add some more depth some more definition so you can see there we've got a lovely little kind of bone color what I've done is I've gone into some of those uh, deeper recesses and when that skeleton hoard's dry, I've just added a little bit more. So what we want to do now is we want to start to bring the model a little brighter. And the colour we're going to use for that is a wraith bone. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to catch some of these edges and sort of spotlights. So on the hand, for example, we're going to just catch the edge of the armour. And what you'll notice is it's very, very subtle. But as it builds up over the entire armour you'll start to notice uh, quite a nice effect, especially on things like the head. And, and what we want to do is we want to, as far as we can, is catch the edges by using uh, the edges modelled on the model. I'm not even sure that sentence makes sense, but you know you know the drill. If you've watched any of my videos before, we're looking to just catch as many edges as we can. Here, for example, because the wraith bone's quite thin, we can just work in a nice little kind of area highlight, add some volume 
to some of these bits and pieces. So all I'm going to do is work my way around the model doing that, uh, and then we'll come back, and then we may add a little bit more of a spot highlight to the armour, or we may just go into the last few bits, which is all things like the lenses and the eye. Really happy with how that armor is looking. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to take some white scar. I've not thinned this, it's literally out of the pot. And I want to paint all the, the lenses. So we've got lots of different ones here. That we're going to paint, and we've got the eye as well. Try to leave some of that darker color in the recess like that. Uh, any other, like I say, any other lenses you've got, get them done. Just knocked a light over as well, so it's all also all happening. And we'll come back and we'll colour those in. One other thing you can use the white scar for as well is if you um, if you just want to put some some spotlights on some of the armour as well, you can just use it there just to add a little bit of uh, a little bit of an extra highlight, a little bit of extra volume if you want. Absolutely no requirement to do it. Less is more in this case. The colour we want for all the lenses. Then I mean I'm just going to do them all red. Uh, and the colour I'm going to use for that is Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint. So all I'm doing is just popping this over the the white. And then once you've done it, so on the lens here, for example, let it dry and then put another layer on uh, towards the bottom. Same thing for the eye and the, the kind of the targeter the, here. I'm just going to just put a little white dot in the middle to make it look like it's uh, it's glowing. And then that's it. Job done, your Deathwing Terminator, base him like the rest of your army. Um, and he's ready to go. Actually, do you know what? He's not quite done. Just a little bit more I want to do on the sword, which I'll show you next. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do, just going to take a little bit of ethematic blue, not too much on your brush, and then just brush it to kind of the bottom there. Now that kind of node, that power node, I've already painted it a little with the white, so that'll kind of cover and I'm just looking to paint some of the kind of silver with that, that blue hue. And you can see straight away there, it gives you a, a really nice kind of faux power sort of effect. So do that on the other side as well. Let it dry, then do it again. And we should, uh, we should be good. So now this guy is done. Now he's ready for the table. So let's have a look at him on the turntable next. So there we have it. We got there eventually. This Deathwing Terminator is done and ready for the tabletop. Key thing to remember is when you're doing that skeleton horde glaze, make sure you do one armor panel at a time, let it dry, and keep brushing down towards the bottom where you're going to get that natural shadow. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me improve the channel, get better visibility, and make sure that you guys are seeing the things you want to see. If you would like to support me, then you can do using the links in the description. There's a link for my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me, a monthly live frequently asked questions video, which we do on YouTube Live. And there's also the chance to ask me anything you want and my Discord server. You can use the links for Goblin Gaming to get up to 20% for all your wargaming needs. And you can also see my Amazon recommended products list. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.